Rainier Avenue Radio is your 2017 community election connection. Tune in to RainierAvenueRadio.world this Monday, November 6th, and Tuesday, November 7th. You'll hear debates from all of our local races, including the final mayor's debate, city attorney, port commission, and Seattle City Council. Thank you both for including early learning in your education platforms. That was a refreshing thing to read. Only one in three Seattle public school students from low-income families can read at grade level by the end of third grade. I really believe it starts with good prenatal care for mothers and making sure we have good, good, affordable child care for mothers so mothers can still work in employment. They know it's safe for their kids. They can afford it. And I hope that I get an honest answer. And I know that there are a lot of people who will definitely identify with me when I ask this question. When you look at me, what do you see? I see a man who is tall or t looks tall from this chair, but I know that most people see a black man whose hair looks different from theirs, whose eyes look different from theirs, and they make all sorts of judgments based on that. Implicit bias is just as powerful a force, if not more powerful than explicit bias. I see a proud, strong black man who is a force in his community, a father, an activist, a leader, someone who has been working in this community for decades to build a better future city. And I recognize that we have systemic racism in our city of Seattle. We have had power in too few hands for too long. And I believe that the white people who've been running this town have had a death grip on what cannot change in this city, what they are preserving, the status quo they are trying to protect. Lucius Tenebris, and this is for Mr. Opti. Thank you. While standards of math and science are priorities for our public schools, should the port actively engage with school districts to implement better trade education programs and work to develop curriculums to better prepare our future workforces for port and other skilled jobs in our county? And if so, how would you implement that? I think uh, that's a very good question. We are talking to the two candidates vying for the position of Port Commissioner number four. We have two moderators as well from the station, Mr. John Yasutaki and Rick Dupree. Taylor Corey is my first name, by the way. Is it affordable housing and cop out almost for not trying to find and solve the root slash roots of gentrification? I would appreciate an answer that I would not be able to read on your website and an answer that you know, you won't promote yourself by veering off. Thank you for that question, because that really is the heart of the matter for me in this city. I feel our city is racing towards a cliff. We are becoming a playground for the wealthy, and it's because we are refusing to confront that we have a deeply unfair, deeply unequal economic system where all the wealth we're generating is going to the lucky few, where we have a housing market where everyone behaves as if it's okay for whoever has the most money to win, to take over a neighborhood. So I, I'm going to take your question and directly and talk to you. I don't think affordable housing is a cop-out, but I do think it is something that comes after the fact when you haven't done what you need to do to stop it in the first place. As uh, Tony said, I am a co-host of the Philam Radio right here on this uh, wonderful uh, radio station. And I'm also the president of the uh, Pacific Asian Empowerment Program who have been transforming uh, lives for the past 30 years. My question to both of you, how do you expect to be able to deal with this influx of other homeless people? I believe the threat you describe is not actually a realistic uh, threat. I believe that people who have fallen into, ho into homelessness because of our housing affordability crisis, because the cost of living in our city is so high, because our state is 50th out of 50 in last place for funding mental health services. Those are the root causes of homelessness. People who move to Seattle move here for the same reason I did, for the same reason others in this community have, for opportunity. We come here thinking we're going to get a great job, and some of us do, and others realize between the cost of living and the housing affordability issue, they can't survive. So thank you for that question. You know, I hear everywhere I go a question similar to that, that people are afraid that somehow if we're too generous, homeless people will move here. I don't think that's the case. And frankly, if we ever got to the time that we've helped too many people, that would be the greatest news we could have. You know, we know that the homeless, the people who are experiencing homelessness are our brothers and sisters, and disproportionately, they're people of color of Native Americans, and so we have to look at the root causes. That's why my proposals to deal with homelessness are not just focused on the people who now are experiencing homelessness, but the people who are right on the brink. Well, the mass, well, 
are your thoughts and how have both you been transparent about uh, how your campaigns are financed? 30 seconds. So I just have to point out, I'm the one who's not taking corporate contributions. I'm the one who doesn't have almost a million dollars of funding working for my campaign, like my opponent does, from Comcast, from CenturyLink, from AT&T, from Amazon, from Microsoft, the big corporations who don't want change. They like the system exactly the way it is. They like it that we don't have municipal broadband, and they can charge exorbitant rates for Internet, especially in the South End. They like it we don't have a high earner's income tax or income tax at all. They are investing in my opponent for a reason. 30 seconds, Ms. Durkin. So first, listeners need to understand that those people have given to a to an, uh, campaign committee I have by law can't control. I've said I don't like it. I wish they wouldn't do it. And frankly, I don't need it because the number of contributors and volunteers have stood up for my campaign. I was out knocking doors today. We've contacted over 80,000 voters on the doors, on the phones. That's the kind of campaign I've been running as a grassroots-based campaign. I haven't self-financed like my opponent has. She's At the end of this campaign, she'll put almost $400,000 of her own money. You know, I think we got to take that money out of it and, and, and corporations. Time. She's making that number up, and but just want to say that. Tune in to RainierAvenueRadio.world to hear debates from Seattle's local candidates this Monday, November 6th, and Tuesday, November 7th, prior to your turning in your ballot. RainierAvenueRadio.world, your 2017 Community Election Connection.